information contained in this podcast is an expression of opinion and does not constitute investment advice. This is the Gold Money Podcast with Andy Duncan, keeping you up to date with expert opinion on precious metals and the markets. Welcome to today's Gold Money Podcast on January the 11th. I'm joined today by Professor Patrick Barron from the United States. He's an Austrian economist and he teaches courses in banking and economics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and the University of Iowa. He also writes regular pieces on Mises.org. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Andy. Along with Godfrey Bloom, MEP, who I spoke to before Christmas, you would like Germany to leave the euro and take the opportunity of the euro crisis to kind of save itself from um, the crash of the euro with the creation of a golden Deutschmark. Now, although we've just had Mr. Barroso telling us everything's absolutely fantastic inside the EU, can you explain this plan in a bit more detail to us? Yeah, I'd be glad to. First of all, I think we need to understand why Godfrey Bloom and I are recommending this. And this is because we see that the Euro project is doomed to failure for two reasons. And these are explained very well by uh, a book by a good friend of mine, Philip Bogus of uh, King Juan Carlos University in Madrid, who wrote a book called The Tragedy of the Euro, which is a kind of a play on words for an economic concept called tragedy of the common. A tragedy of the commons occurs when a resource is commonly owned. If it is commonly owned and there are no restrictions on who can grab the resource, then that resource will be plundered to extinction. And this is the this is how the euro has been misconstructed, which is another term, very good term that Dr. Bogus has coined for this case, in which we have 17 members of the European Monetary Union that, in effect, by many roundabout ways, are able to print their own euros and uh, subsidize their own uh, profligate spending at the expense of all other members of the European Monetary Union. The reason we want Germany to leave this terrible setup is that it is one of the few countries in the European Monetary Union that has close to a balanced budget and is not inflating the euro. In fact, it is accepting euros into its own country, of course, because it's part of the European Monetary Union, euros that are being printed, say, in Greece and Portugal and Italy, and people are buying German goods. So Germany is experiencing inflation in that regard. Plus, Germany is the country that its taxpayers are being taxed to provide the biggest bailouts, the biggest chunk of the bailouts that the European Monetary Union is sending through its I think they call it their stability fund, European Financial Stability Fund, which is just another way to force Germany to take real resources and funnel them to the rest of the European Monetary Union countries. So we have a case here in which the worse your budget deficit is, the more you benefit because you can grab resources from other countries, mainly Germany. And that's why we say this process has to stop so that Germany itself is no longer plundered. Now, your plan might have some merits, uh, especially to people like us who believe in gold and Austrian economics. But I've been speaking to uh, Professor Hulsman recently, a German professor, and Professor Polite, another German professor. And they both think uh, this is extremely unlikely that Germany will leave the euro for two different sets of reasons. Professor Hulsman, because he sees no political will in Germany, no group of people prepared to raise a political party to back the measure for whatever reason. A lot to do with kind of Second World War guilt problems and so on. And Professor Pollard thinks the German people won't leave the euro because of what he calls collective corruption, whereby the German people are addicted, like many other people around the world, to easy government spending funded through taxation, borrowing and inflation. So given that we have all these potential problems and we have these two German professors who say that it's not going to happen, how do you think we can overcome that hurdle and actually get towards an independent Deutschmark or possibly even a gold Deutschmark? What Godfrey Bloom and I are saying is not that we we recognize that there are powerful voices in Germany that recognize this, although there really are powerful voices, especially in the banking sector. Jens Wiedemann, I know, understands this. Jürgen Stark understands this. And Axel Weber, these are men who at one time were on the board and quit the European Central Bank in disgust because of the monetary printing. So these people understand what's happening. Now, I agree with Professor Hulsman and Polite 
And from what I read, yes, there really are no powerful political voices within Germany that are calling for this because uh, there are sectors of German economy that are benefiting, very powerful sectors. But they're benefiting at the expense of all other Germans. Mainly, it is the German export industry, the heavy industries, and the powerful political unions that are benefiting from having higher employment than they normally would have. But that comes at the expense of their fellow German citizens. Eventually, eventually, I believe this is going to be recognized, especially when prices in Germany start to rise and the sectors in Germany that are not affiliated directly with the export industries see their standard of living dropping. Then they're going to start demanding of their political leaders of what in the heck is happening. They're working very hard. They're working long hours. They're working longer into their lives than anyone else in Europe, and yet their standard of living is falling. So when that happens, I think then you're going to start to see a political, a smart political group that will arise and explain to the people what's happening. And that's what Godfrey Bloom and I are saying this, let's don't wait until things are that bad. Let's recognize right now what's happening. Let's educate the people and tell them this is what's happening and this is why Germany has to get out of the European Monetary Union, reinstate the Deutschmark, and preferably go the additional step and tie it to gold and end this folly of, of fiat money. Even if, though, we could get 100% of the German people to agree with uh, with you and, and Godfrey Blum, um, especially on the gold side as well as the Deutschmark side, aren't there then going to be external pressures? I, I think I seem to remember in the tragedy of the euro, Professor Bagus basically said the price for German reunification from the French was that Germany gives up the Deutschmark and, and joins the, Fre uh, the French government with the euro. So there'd be massive pressure from France. Also, as well, I think, um, even if the Swiss did it or the British did it or the Germans did it or the Russians or the Chinese and somebody moves to a gold currency, the whole of the rest of the world will ditch all their paper monies and move straight to gold, uh, the German gold Deutschmark. And the biggest loser there would probably be the US government. Now, we've had the US government uh, very, very recently, in the last few days, virtually order the British government to stay inside the EU. So would not the American government, as well as all the other EU countries, gang up on Germany and use some measures of political force or other kinds of force to stop them moving to a gold Deutschmark? Well, there's no doubt that there are many <clears throat> powerful forces in the world that benefit from fiat money, especially the political elite. <clears throat> and they're not going to want this to happen. And the United States is going to be the biggest loser, but that's because the United States has been benefiting the most from being able to print dollars by the train loads and force them on the rest of the world. This is, this has got to stop. Now, Germany's action to leave the European Monetary Union, reinstate the Deutschmark, and, and tie their Deutschmark to gold, if they would, is a non-coercive act. They are a sovereign nation. They have, they have every right to, to do this. They're not forcing anyone to do anything. They're saying this is what, this is what we, the German people, the German government is, or is going to do. Now, I don't think France is going to like it, but France is not going to invade Germany. I don't think the United States is going to like it. We're not going to storm the, uh, you know, the Bundestag and arrest all the legislators who agree to this. We may uh, impose some kind of financial burden. We may cut off German exports. We may freeze German bank accounts. Who knows what we might do? But Germany, this, I want to point out to the to the listeners, this is a non-coercive act, and it is the right thing to do, and the Germans have every right to do this, and they should stand up to this political pressure. Now, the reason that Germany agreed to go on the euro <clears throat> when it reunified its country was there were powerful groups within the political groups within Germany that wanted to do this. The German people themselves and especially <clears throat> the German bankers were shocked and aghast that they were forced to give up their beloved Deutschmark. The Deutschmark, of all the fiat currencies in the world, the Bundesbank was running probably the least inflationary regime of all the major currencies in the world. And the uh, Deutschmark had steadily gained in value against all currencies for decades. So this created sort of envy in the part of the rest of the world and especially among the French, who said, you know, 
They wanted to destroy this. They wanted Germany to have to give up the Deutschmark because if they kept the Deutschmark, eventually the rest of the world's currencies would depreciate so much against them that they would have to strengthen their own currencies. The only way they could do that is to give up their welfare state. They do not want to give up their welfare state, but they're going to have to do it or otherwise their economies are going to collapse. Andy, this whole thing gets into a big area of understanding how an entire economy works. And I, and the monetary system, of course, is crucial to this. But the longer that we go on with this folly of world fiat currencies and zero interest rates and printing money till the cows come home, the worse the inevitable crash is going to be. So Godfrey Bloom and I are saying, let's recognize right now what's going on. And we are in the unique position of having one major country in the world that through a non-coercive act can put an end to all of it and start what I would consider a cascade of virtuous-like actions where all the world would eventually go back onto the gold standard and we would be back to sound money and we would again start having progress. Okay, you're beating me into submission here, and I think you're right. If Germany went to gold, then everyone would be forced to go to gold immediately because I would want to be paid in gold Deutschmarks. However, I'm just going to be devil's advocate one last time and say Germany may own a large amount of gold on paper, and even if everybody in Germany wants a gold Deutschmark, and even if everybody else in the world is going to let them politically have a gold Deutschmark, do they actually have any physical gold that they can base that new currency on? Well, Germany has to find out. Godfrey Bloom and I wrote an, an article saying, <clears throat> recommend me that Germany, as quickly as possible, repatriate its gold that is held in foreign banks. Now, of course, at one time, uh, Germany had most of its gold bullion held outside of its borders because it was on the, really, it was on the border with the Warsaw Pact and uh, did not want to, in case of war, have its gold bullion stolen from it. So a lot of it is in the United States. A lot of it's in the Bank of England. Is it there? There are rumors flying everywhere. We have to find out. We just have to find out. If it's not there, then we have to know and we have to move on. We have to, we'll have to address that. Frankly, if, if it's not there, then there should be serious prosecutions of I don't care who it is and where they are, whether they're in the United States or whether they're in the UK or in France. If someone has stolen the property of another nation, then they have to pay for that. Before Germany can go back on the on a golden Deutschmark, first of all, I think it should go back on the Deutschmark as a fiat currency, and it should then it should repatriate its gold, find out if it has if the gold is really there, repatriate it so that the people who hold Deutschmarks know that they can redeem their Deutschmarks in physical gold if they so desire. Find out if it's there, get it back into Germany, and then go back on the, on a gold standard. Although Mr. Barroso's told us everything is fantastic in the EU at the moment, if Germany does stay in the euro, uh, what do you think is going to happen to it? Well, <clears throat> what's happening to it right now is it's uh, it's having its the capital depleted because, uh, frankly, let's just use Greece for an example. I'm not picking on the Greeks, but you know they're in the headlines every day. Greeks are printing money and buying German products. Well, what a nice thing for the Greeks. This is just going to cause inflation in Germany, and that's going to cause a collapse of their of their industries. It's a decumulation of capital in Germany. So uh, if it just keeps going on, the first indication the Germans are going to get is if they're going to see prices rise, and they're going to see that their wages are not keeping up with the rising prices. They're going to see a deterioration in their standard of living. And how fast this progresses or how slowly, it, it's hard to say. But this will happen because these are the inevitable forces that have been, been unleashed by this misconstruction of the euro where 17 countries can print their, as many euros as they desire. Well, I'm a, I'm a follower of Detlef Schlichter and his paper money collapse. So if they don't go to the golden Deutschmark, then I think there will be a paper money collapse and they could have a, another Weimar inflation or a um, 1940s hyperinflation again. But getting away from Germany and getting more towards your kind of home turf, we've just been through the uh, the fiscal cliff. Now, you're there in uh, Iowa. Um, was that all a fabricated exercise to increase a payroll tax for everybody? Or was was there something really going on? And even even if it was a genuine thing, is it going to make any difference to the American situation? Well, uh, <clears throat> I think most people in this country, we see this happening all the time. It's almost like a, a, a dance that the two parties play. Uh, we knew all along 
I think everyone knew all along that there was going to be some sort of compromise at the end because if you're going to, to raise taxes dramatically when you're in a recession is just the height of folly. And so I don't think anyone really expected that they were going to allow all this to happen. Here in the U.S., the government is probably, you know, we've had irresponsible government in this country for at least a decade or longer. They're spending a trillion dollars more a year than they're taking in, and they're just printing money to cover that up, and they think they can do that forever. At some point, the government has to cut spending. They just keep looking at the deficit, saying, well, we, we need to cut the deficit. Well, one way you can cut the deficit is to raise taxes, which is what the fiscal cliff was all about. Of course, the other way to raise taxes, the beneficial way to, or to, what beneficial way to reduce the deficit is to cut spending. And the government just is addicted to spending money. And this is again, Andy, this is another a sort of inevitable consequence of fiat money regime because no one ever really feels the real discipline of running a, a balanced budget because when you're on a gold standard, which is, is a true representation of an economy's ability to produce, then you only have so much gold that the, that the people are willing to grant to you either through taxes or through honest borrowing. But when you have the printing press, or in today's technology, you have a computer button that you can push and pr produce a trillion dollars of spending at the push of a computer button. No one in government ever feels that they have to not spend the money or cut back on anything. But this is another reason that the world has got to get out of this fiat uh, paper money syndrome. I agree with, with uh, Detlef Schlichter that it's all going to collapse if we don't get it fixed pretty quickly. Well, speaking of a trillion dollars, I, I read a remarkable article this morning by Paul Krugman about a $1 trillion platinum coin to be issued by the Treasury, taken in by the Federal Reserve to then issue a trillion dollars on the basis of this trillion dollar platinum coin. <laughs> uh, Mr. Krugman seemed to be, uh, seemed to, <laughs> seemed to be all for it. Um, the Fed, uh, really recently released some minutes sort of suggesting they were going to stop or slow down currency debasement. And that had a big hit on the, uh, the gold price, which enabled all of us gold bugs to, uh, to buy some more gold at knockdown prices. Now, in Eric Sprott's phrase of, of, of sucking and blowing at the same time, which is what the Federal Reserve is doing, do you think the Federal Reserve is going to have to buy up a trillion dollars worth of U.S. government bonds this year? And if it's not going to be them with binary digits printed out of a computer, who is going to buy all of these American government bonds? Oh, they're going to print the money. They're just going to print it. This whole thing about, you know, Krugman, but first of all, if Paul Krugman thinks it's a good idea, that should make it very suspect right away. I, <laughs> how he ever won the Nobel Prize, I have no idea. Every time, I haven't read an article of his in the New York Times that is anything but ridiculous. And politically charged, too. I mean, it's not an honest, he's not really writing as an honest economist. He's writing more as a political hack. Uh, this is just a ridiculous idea and another way that uh, thinks that somehow the government can just keep printing money till the cows come home. But I, yeah, they will print $1 trillion worth of currency because there really just, there really is no demand. The bond market is, is there's no demand in the bond market for this. People, who wants to buy a 10 year government bond that's going to pay you less than inflation rate? I mean, that's ridiculous. Nobody's going to buy that. So this has to come to an end and the sooner the better. Now, when it does come to an end, do you think that the dollar will have to go back to gold? And we can watch the James Bond uh, gold, uh, Goldfinger movie again with confidence. Yes. <laughs> um, what What do you think the tipping point is going? I, I, I don't want to nail down to time frames because uh, Austrian econ economics is, is human based and doesn't go on time frames like a machine. But what will be the tipping psychological point be? And after we move back to a gold dollar link again of, of some form, whatever that is, uh, what do you think the gold dollar price will? Will be roughly. Oh, now this is really this is really interesting. The tipping point is is really impossible to say. However, what usually happens in cases like this is it's something that is not on our radar screen, and sometimes it's something that we don't really equate directly with the problem at hand. But it will be something that will weaken the confidence of currencies around the world. What that might be, it might be, uh, you know, a war uh, between <clears throat> between India and Pakistan and Kashmir. Uh, it might be some sort of shooting war between Japan and China who have claims against the same uninhabited islands, which sounds just incredible that they're doing this. It could be something like that, or it could be something we're not even thinking about, but it, it'll be something that will weaken the confidence of the people in their currency. Now, you ask about, well, what would the price of gold 
go to. <laughs> this is incredible. And I, if you have, your listeners have a piece of paper uh, at hand, they can just write these numbers down. But uh, the United States for decades has claimed that it owns 262.5 million ounces of gold. Okay. That's how much gold the, the United States government owns. M2, which is the widest uh, measure of money in the United States, is at $10 trillion. So what would, what would the price of gold have to be? What would the Fed have to set the price of gold at so that it would not run out of its 262 million ounces of gold if it started accepting uh, dollars for people who wanted to reclaim cash in their dollars and take the actual gold? So you divide 262 million that's ounces of gold, into $10 trillion, and you come up with a staggering $38,000 per ounce. $38,000 per ounce. This is just an indication of the profligacy of the irresponsibility of our Fed and our government in just printing money. This is real. And I think that this is what the price of gold in dollar terms would have to go to. Otherwise, let's just say that it didn't put it at $38,000 an ounce. Let's say it said, oh, we're going to put it at $2,000 an ounce. Well, you and I and everybody else would rush to the, rush to our nearest Federal Reserve Bank, hand them all the money we could get and take those, and take those ounces. And they would quickly run out of ounces of gold and the dollar would collapse. It would be absolutely worthless. And if Mr. Bond goes into Fort Knox and discovers there's actually only half the amount of gold, then we're talking $76,000 an ounce. Oh, my God. Who knows what it will be? I mean, we, what, right now we're sort of, we're afraid there's a, a smell down in the basement and we're afraid to go down there. We're afraid what we're going to find. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, uh, but I say we're going to have to go down there and find out what's down there. I mean, we're, we just have to, we just have to end this. We have to know what we really have, <clears throat> who really owns gold. And we've got to get our governments to stop enslaving us with their constant printing of fiat currency. I suspect it will be a lot of uh, guilt-edged IOUs from various people in Asia. Anyway, it's been fascinating talking <laughs> to you today, Patrick. Um, is there any way our listeners can find out more about you and your work? I do have a blog. It's patrickbaron.blogspot.com. That's www.patrickbaron.blogspot.com. And for those of us in England, that's Baron with two R's rather than our usual one as well. Thank you very much for your time today, uh, Patrick. Uh, it's been great talking to you, and uh, I'd like to wish you a Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you, Andy. My pleasure. Subscribe to the Gold Money newsletter at www.goldmoney.com to receive email updates on new articles, videos, and iTunes podcasts from our Gold Research section.